from a slim fruit based laptop to a thick snake based laptop, well that's the transition I've made over the past two weeks. And to say it was a breath of fresh air is an understatement. Look folks, when I say a breath of fresh air, I don't mean anything in the department of portability, slimness, great battery life or anything you could expect from a company that's based off an apple. But when it comes to sheer power, ports and more, this laptop has been an absolute breath of fresh air. Coming in at only 4.6 pounds of only 2 hours of battery life, this laptop is not meant for the typical mobility that a MacBook or any Windows than a light will offer you. But what this laptop is meant for is power that you can take with you. So how does it perform? Well you don't need to look hard to see this laptop has some monster specs behind it, with an RTX 2070 Max-Q and i9-10750H. Yes, the 2070 is over a year old and the new 40 series on the horizon it may seem a bit outdated, but the 2070 still performs great in games. Games such as Fortnite run 180 FPS on medium settings, and Minecraft runs at 500 to 800 FPS on high settings, and even with shaders and medium settings, it shows around 70 to 90 FPS. With all that gaming at a high FPS, the laptop screen is 144 Hz, which means that the screen will feel silky smooth no matter what you do. Speaking of the screen, this panel is not the most amazing out there, but it looks fine with its 1080p resolution and the screen is matte, which means there is no glare and bright sunlight, which would be great if the screen went bright enough to see in sunlight. On the topic of sunlight, battery life on this laptop, as you may have caught earlier as well, not the best. Yes, I know, if they put AMD in style instead of Intel, the laptop would probably get a bit better battery life, but let's be honest, what well, gaming laptop really has good battery life? Disclaimer though, with the battery life, I've only used a computer on battery of Linux, and Linux is known to have a bit worse of battery life than Windows. The reason for that is, well, Windows only uses the GPU well plugged in, so there's no gaming on battery power, unless you want low FPS. But that may not sound fun at first, if you have to game on battery power, you will not get more than 20 minutes of battery life at the best. While plugged in, using a GPU for gaming, the computer does heat up over time, and it can almost go hot enough to hurt. I did not give Apple a pass on its 2019 MacBook Pro, so Razer is not getting any special treatment here. It's what I would say if the computer got hot while doing anything that is not gaming related. But it only gets hot while gaming, unlike the MacBook Pro of yesteryear. The only time the computer gets hot is while gaming, which is expected, and yes, the computer can get very hot, but do remember that the GPU only works well plugged in into power, and more people use a separate keyboard well plugged into their setup. Of course though, if you just plug in to charge and start playing games, it starts to get a bit toasty, which is why this laptop does not get full pass, as a user might not be using a separate keyboard while it's plugged in for gaming. Therefore, be careful of this one. When the computer gets hot, of course their fans will turn on, and well, when the fans turn on, believe me, you can hear it. While doing any work on Linux, the fans are on low, but the minute you turn on Windows, the computer fans are immediately a lot higher and more noticeable. The build of this laptop is top notch, almost as great as a MacBook. Just like the MacBook, the laptop's chassis is full aluminum, the back of the laptop seems to pick up fingerprints worse than the current phones coming out of Cupertino. This is a laptop that I'd recommend a D-Brand skin for. Oh, it's beautiful. The keyboard feels great to type on, has a good amount of travel and I like this keyboard a bit more than I like my MacBook keyboard. And in classic reviewer cliche, I wrote some of the script on the laptop itself. And one more thing. The keyboard features single zone RGB, controllable through Razer Snap software that comes pre-installed on the laptop straight out of the box. And yes, the RGB colour is of course spread to the back to the beautiful glowing green Razer logo. The flex on the keyboard is next to none and the same can be set about the display flex. The trackpad is not on the same level as the MacBook trackpads, but it's spacious and works great. Unlike almost any laptop to exist in the past 6 years, this laptop includes more than a USB-C port or two. This laptop features everything from USB-C to HDMI to Ethernet and also a proprietary Charger. The two USB-C ports have one Thunderbolt and one USB-C, for the former it's Thunderbolt 3 and for both of them you can't charge the laptop through them. That is where Razer's proprietary charger comes into play. The proprietary charger is the best looking charger I've ever got on a laptop. It comes braided which gives it a high quality look and feel and after dropping all that dough, a high quality look and feel is what you want. You can plug into the laptop either way, but when you plug in facing towards you, it locks almost all the ports on the side other than the USB-C port and the headphone jack. Yes, you heard that correct folks, a headphone jack. Unlike the latest bit of nonsense coming out of Cupertino without a headphone jack, this laptop does indeed offer one. Now to Apple's credit, the headphone jack is still in the Mac for now, but on a pro machine, having to worry about losing a useful port is just plain out stupid. As for HDMI ports, HDMI 2.0 and spade and mamba jumba that means it can go up to 4K 60Hz or it can connect to a 1080p display at 144Hz and that means your games will be silky smooth and if you want a higher hertz or resolution you can use the Thunderbolt connection. Unlike most laptops now, with this laptop you can upgrade the RAM and SSD. The RAM comes with 16GB and goes up to 64GB and the SSD can go up to 4TB, it comes with 512GB. There are two SSD slots which means even more room for upgrades down the road. 
So far, I've been telling you all the good, but no bad. Well, on the former, just go back to the beginning of this video and you can see everything great about this laptop, which there is a lot of, as you can tell. But with the latter option, stick with me for the rest of this video and you'll see bad parts about this laptop. As I mentioned before, I'm dual booting Linux and Windows in this computer, Windows for gaming and Linux for everything else. Most of the time, when I turn the computer on in the morning, if it wasn't Windows or even Linux the day before, it sometimes turns on restarting itself. Surprisingly though, Windows has not tried to update itself that much while I'm gaming. And the best thing I can say about this webcam and mic combination is that it exists. While I've had a few issues with this computer, overall this computer has been great, powerful and much more. I really do hope you enjoyed this video, as these videos take hours to make. It really help if you like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.